is a film from 1963 called Rampage, starring the legendary Robert Mitchum as a game trapper. In the story, Mitchum's character is sent to the Malay jungles to catch a rare breed of big cat, rumored to be a hybrid of a leopard and tiger. Even though the film is fictitious, did such hybrids exist in the jungles of South Asia? Legend has it that a fearful group of leopards once roamed this area. The legend of these leopards transpired near the vicinity of Kumana National Park. Centuries ago, a group of native people known as Vedas attempted to reenact a ceremony dedicated to a powerful god. In doing so, they hunted wild boar and used their fat to light the ceremonial lamps. The angered god then unleashed the fearful killer leopards of Lenama. These leopards destroyed most of the Veda people. However, some of them managed to escape by climbing atop a rock. Yet the leopards made their way to the top and killed all but one. To find out more, we talked to Pradeep Jayatunga, the author of the book, The Leopards of Lenama. Thiyunevil is the one who first recorded this legend. Lenama leopards. There are two separate legends of Nick Tavos and uh, uh, Lenama leopards. But the more prevalent legend is about uh, using pig's oil to light the torches for the ceremony and that angered the gods. Certain local people claim to have seen the legendary Lenama leopards, including venerable Anadasiri Taro. He lived here in the Kadumbi Gala Monastery. In his posthumous memoir, the monk claimed that many individuals in the monastery saw the Lenama leopards, including himself. Supposedly, the leopards were much larger than normal leopards and were never scared at the sight of humans. What he saw here would forever be shrouded in mystery. Venerable Ananda Siri, Tabugala Ananda Siri, who spent about 25 years in the area. And he was quite an observant character. He used to write, uh, contribute articles to the journal at that time published by the wildlife department. He said that the uh, face was fully fleshed uh, and uh, roundish, and the growl was much deeper. And uh, most interestingly, uh, that uh, the Lenable leopard had stripes down its neck, either side of the neck. But like all leopards, Sri Lankan leopards do not have stripes, but are uniquely spotted. They are quite wary of humans, unlike the fabled killer leopards of Lenama. Sri Lanka had rare cases of man-eaters in the past, including this leopard, which killed around 12 people back in 1924. Since the Lenama leopards killed people according to the legend long before the 1920s, they would actually be the first recorded man-eaters of Sri Lanka. But the word uh, recorded is a bit of a problem because it's a legend. Now, Poonani and Komari are recorded properly. And then before that as well, I think in uh, nine, 1850s, tenant records uh, instance of man-eating somewhere in the southern province. And also, there would have been, I mean, like, it's very, very likely that leopards would have been attacking people in the jungle villages. In that sense, uh, Komari, Punani, and if Lenama is true, yes. The, those are the three instances of true man-eating in Sri Lanka by leopards. In this cave complex near Kumana, there's a drawing that supposedly shows what appears to be a leopard attacking a man. The locals associate it with the fearful Lenama leopards. If such leopards existed, how did they come about? In the 1800s, British politician Emerson Tennant mentioned the presence of a Bengal tiger in Sri Lanka. 1850s, I believe. 
that uh, tiger used to be spotted by the hunters who used to go for hunting in uh, jungles in the vicinity of Trincomalee. So he said that this is one of the tigers which had escaped from a shipwreck. So the ships used to transport these animals sometimes uh, from India to, uh, to Trincomalee and then from there to be shipped to uh, maybe Europe. So one, uh, there's a record of uh, one escaping and living in the jungle for a while. But even if the tiger did breed with local leopards, it's not scientifically proven that they are able to provide viable offspring. It really is not a theory as such. It's, um, it's, it's mere speculation. That is only because of the stripes. So the stripes would show some features of a tiger, the hybrids, of the, uh, the Panteras are possible. That is lion and uh, tiger interbreed. That's they made ligos or tigons. And some of them, very rarely, those hybrids are fertile themselves. But the leopard and tiger, it's very rare. And no live offspring have come. The dead cubs, which were born to, in one instance, used to have spots, crossets, as well as stripes. In 1900, a merchant of wild animals attempting to cross a female leopard with a Bengal tiger. The offspring was stillborn, but interestingly, it had a combination of spots and stripes. They say that sometimes very large male leopard breed with uh, tigresses in India, and something called a dogla is born. That's also a legend. The coat of the animal in the film Rampage also displays a strange purplish hue in this scene. Even though the story is fictitious, there have been reported cases of leopard-tiger hybrids in the wild. In the early 1900s, in the jungles of India, F.C. Hicks, a deputy conservator, mentions a sighting of a dogla in his book. He writes that the animal had a head of a leopard and the striped shoulders and body of a tiger. He clarified that it was a very old male hybrid. The question arises, was the striped animal Anadasiri pterosaur in Sri Lanka also a hybrid? Venerable Anadasiri, of course, had seen the leopard several times. Once he had been accompanied by a monk, and that monk had got frightened, saying that this is not a leopard, but a tiger. In 1977, at an England zoo, a black leopard successfully bred with a tigress in captivity. The offspring was called a pantig, which is a combination of panther and tiger. As the cub grew older, allegedly its appearance matched what was mentioned earlier by Hicks in India. Yet, after the picture was published in 1978, nothing was ever documented about it. Adding further confusion to the topic, British civil servant Hugh Neville mentioned an unspotted leopard he encountered in Trincomalee. I think it's more likely that this is, a, this is an aberration or a, uh, or a mutation of skin patterns. There's something called uh, abandonism. Abandonism is that uh, when an animal has spots or rosets or something like that, then it has many more than usual. Uh, so they merge. They merge and become lines, the swirls or stripes. So that, that is of course quite uh, well documented. They have found leopards like that. So this could be, um, I mean, uh, much more than a, a hybrid. It's much more likely that it's a mutation of skin pattern. With the lack of scientific evidence, is it fair to assume that a fearful clan of leopards once roamed this area? Legend, by definition, has not been proven uh, scientifically. But the legend itself is interesting. So that uh, on, even on a historical or, or anthropological perspective, it's interesting. And this uh, abundanism, whether Sri Lankan leopards also have uh, mutated uh, skin patterns. So that's quite interesting whether that can happen in Sri Lanka. 
Unless new scientific evidence emerges about these mythical animals, the leopards of Lenema will continue to be a legend, if not a unique species lost in time.